Since the invention of the printing press, there's been a battle to control disseminated information. In the early 1900s, oil tycoon John D. Rockefeller took control of every newspaper and news editor of his era. He became America's first billionaire, paving the way for the power hungry ever since. Thus began the gold rush for the modern world's most precious resource, the narrative. Do you have any people being paid by the CIA who are contributing to a major circulation American journal? All right, I've been working on a video for the last week or so, but I still need some more time on it. So I do have a plan for a couple of shorter videos coming out in the meantime. First, why don't we take a look at how the U.S. establishment is targeting Katherine Herridge over at CBS. Now, I suppose it all began when CBS fired her. It was exactly one day after the Biden White House complained about how Katherine Herridge had reached out for comments on her reporting about the classified documents and the Biden family's foreign business deals. And so, after firing investigative reporter Katherine Herridge, CBS reportedly seized her files, computers, and most importantly, information on privileged sources. However, things escalated again on Thursday. Katherine Herridge was also held in contempt for not divulging her source on a particular story. Now, what was the story, you ask? Well, it was all about Yan Ping Chen, who is an American Chinese scientist and their ties to the Chinese military. Essentially, Chen was gaining access to information about U.S. military service members and, allegedly, passing it along to the CCP. So, yeah, you heard that right. People like Eric Swalwell can sleep with a Chinese spy and be promoted. However, if you try to expose a Chinese spy, well, then you become the target. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? However, I do believe it all ties into the Biden corruption stories too. Yes, I believe they targeted her for multiple reasons, but they just needed something to initiate the intimidation campaign. You know what I mean? And well, the story about the Chinese spy did the trick. Again though, I don't think that's the real reason. It was just convenient. Seeing as the alleged Chinese spy sued over privacy concerns. Yeah. You just, <laughs> it's all so ridiculous. Now, I don't agree with all of her reporting, but she was one of the only journalists actually looking into the Biden crime stories and pushing back against blatant falsehoods from the US establishment. So with that being said, why don't we take a listen to this clip from Ted Cruz. And that's because I think he's right to assume they are targeting her solely because she is one of the few journalists actually pushing for transparency from the US establishment. In many ways, Catherine Herridge is a, is a unicorn because the corporate media is so utterly corrupt that they do not report on news that is inconvenient to the regime. And Catherine Herridge was a rebel in that. She actually reported on things the Biden White House didn't like. And so CBS was engaged in layoffs, and I get, look, the media are a bunch of dishonest, lying hacks. I understand that they're firing people because people don't want to purchase their goods anymore because it is useless. They're no longer journalists. They're liars. That being said, if you're laying off people, somebody and some corporate suit in a corner office made a decision. Who do we want to lay off? Let's lay off the person who actually is criticizing the White House. And so Catherine Herridge, they laid off. That was shocking in and of itself because she is such a unicorn. But then the news broke this week that, that, that not only did they lay her off, but CBS officials took the unusual step of seizing her files, her computers, her records, including her information on privileged sources. And, and that's, that, that, that is right at the heart, the essence of journalism of free press well cbs the corporate suits have said we want to know who your sources are and the problem is that nobody rational with their head not inserted in a bodily orifice believes that the corporate suits want that for any reason other than bad purposes um look i'm going to read from 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 an article in the hill so in The Hill, uh, this is something written by Jonathan Turley, who has been really terrific on a lot of these issues, but here's what he, he, what he wrote. Quote, I have spoken confidentially with current and former CBS employees who have stated that they could not recall the company ever taking such a step before. 
One former CBS journalist said that many employees, quote, are confused why Herridge was laid off. As one of the correspondents who broke news regularly and did a lot of original reporting. This has led to concerns about the source of the pressure. He added that there he has never seen a seizure of records from a departing journalist and that the move has sent a chilling signal to the ranks of CBS. And that is deeply, deeply disturbing. And if you think about it, there's really not many journalists left in legacy media. And I think there's a reason for this. If you remember, the Obama-Biden administration made it a priority to target journalists during their time in office. So I don't think you're going to be surprised to hear that the judge involved with the contempt order is an Obama appointee. Anyway, check this out. And as far as clips go, this one's pretty long. It's about four minutes, just to give you a fair warning. But you kind of need the context. Share with our viewers what's going on between you and the White House. Well, they're, they're not happy at all. And some people kind of, you know, said, uh, look, we don't see eye to eye on this. They, they never really said, though, afterwards, they've said that this is factually wrong. And, they, and it was said to me in an email by a top... What, what is, was, is what this was what, said, yeah. It was, it was uh, said very clearly, you will regret doing this. Who sent that email to you? Well, I'm not going to say. I was mean, it a it's somebody senior I, person at the A White very House? senior person. Makes me very uncomfortable to have the White House telling reporters uh, you're going to regret doing something that you believe in. The Obama administration is facing yet another scandal this morning. The Associated Press says the Justice Department secretly gathered phone records from its reporters and its editors. Now, the AP says the government came in and scooped up phone records for 20 of its phone lines used by reporters and editors. Prosecutors were told also seized cell phone records of several AP employees. So the AP says there was no warning, yeah. no negotiations. The government just simply came in got the subpoenas, took the phone logs, and then notified the AP after the fact. And the AP calls this a, quote, massive and unprecedented intrusion. It's being called an unprecedented government intrusion. The Justice Department secretly collected two months of telephone records from the Associated Press and its reporters. Associated Press CEO Gary Pruitt says, quote, these records potentially reveal communications with confidential sources across all of the news gathering activities undertaken by the AP during a two month period, provide a roadmap to AP's news gathering operations, and disclose information about AP's activities and operations that the government has no conceivable right to know. I think the effect on the media has already been felt. I mean, you have sources that are being shut down, doors just being shut in people's faces. Now, that was probably the intention. Court documents released this week show the Obama administration secretly monitored a Washington journalist. In seeking a search warrant, the FBI called James Rosen a criminal co-conspirator. For the first time ever, a presidential administration is treating news reporting like a crime and a reporter like a criminal suspect. The level of government surveillance over a reporter was unprecedented. Agents monitored Rosen's movements in and out of the State Department. They searched his personal emails and combed through his cell phone records. Bipartisan outrage over what some are calling Obama's war on journalism. The Department of Justice has finally decided not to force New York Times reporter James Risen to reveal his source for confidential information. Without this decision from the Justice Department, Risen would have faced possible jail time. He was subpoenaed in the trial of former CIA official Jeffrey Sterling. Sterling is accused of leaking classified information about a failed attempt to sabotage Iran's nuclear program. That information appeared in Risen's 2006 book, State of War, and the government hoped the journalist's testimony could convict Sterling. But Risen vocally fought the subpoena, sparking a long legal battle that almost wound up before the Supreme Court. The case stalled in June after the Supreme Court declined to take action, leaving the Justice Department the option of trying to jail Risen for not revealing his sources. On Wednesday, a federal judge ordered the administration to reach a decision about whether to take action against Risen by next week. Risen's case has drawn stern criticism from free speech advocates who fear the government is trying to silence investigative reporters and chill the free press. Risen himself recently blasted President Obama as the greatest enemy to press freedom in a generation. What I think is dangerous to a democracy when you have 
investigative reporting that the government is trying to limit through the use of the Justice Department and the legal system. The Obama administration already has several black marks on the subject of press freedom. They've been blasted on two occasions for searching the phone records and emails of journalists. So, pretty interesting, huh? Targeting journalists seems to be a hallmark of the Obama-Biden subversion. So, during the Obama presidency, did they strike so much fear into the press that the entire media landscape essentially caved to the U.S. establishment? Or have they been corrupted for much, much longer? That's a pretty good question, because I'd go out on a limb to say they've been corrupted at least since Operation Mockingbird. Do you have any people being paid by the CIA who are contributing to a major circulation American journal? During a Senate committee investigation, it was revealed that the CIA had been conducting a covert operation to infiltrate and control U.S. media. They called it Operation Mockingbird. We do have people who submit pieces to American journals. Do you have any people paid by the CIA who are working for television networks? This, I think, gets into the kind of details, Mr. Chairman, that I'd like to get into in executive session. Over 3,000 CIA contracted and trained operatives were placed in key positions within top media outlets. Posing as editors and journalists, these well-paid actors never dared to question the effect of their lies on the world beyond their cozy studio. How often does the CIA manipulate the media in this way? It goes beyond your wildest imagination setting up student organizations so they could draw radical students in. 5,000 university professors co-opted to help the CIA manipulate people's minds. Journalists in the U.S., including big-name journalists, co-opted to function routinely to help the CIA put out stories and biases to the world. As this 1952 CIA memo says, the aim is controlling an individual to the point where he will do our bidding against his will. It's a great brainwashing process to change the perception of reality of every American. However, there has been a clear difference ever since 2008. And I should note, a lot of people also point to the Smith-Munst Act of 2012 as a key moment too. That is part of why we have this corrupt media. You could go to Wikipedia and find Operation Mockingbird, that the CIA has been in there forever. Then Obama repealed the 1948 smith munt Act, which then permitted propaganda to be in broadcasting. It no longer said that it had to be credible. And the fact remains that holding a journalist in contempt for protecting a confidential source is going to have a chilling effect on journalism. You see, after this, there's going to be even more journalists towing the line because they don't want to risk their livelihood or their career. And it would be incredibly naive to believe the current administration, the DOJ, and the FBI do not understand that. More than likely, it's the whole point. It's the exact same way they have been intimidating the press ever since 2008. And just on Friday, even Steve Baker, a veteran journalist who was documenting January 6th, well, he just turned himself into the FBI for a jail sentence. You do not have a free press, and you haven't had one at least since Obama. And you know, there's one more aspect to this that's quite Orwellian, and so ironic that it's oddly funny, in a very, very dark way. So, there was a recent shakeup at CBS leadership. Ingrid Matthews was promoted, and then she signed off on firing Catherine Herridge, and presumably had a role in trying to seize her files. And so, what did she get for violating the First Amendment and targeting the free press? Well, of course, she received a free speech award. I mean, you really can't make this up. However, it also alludes to the projection and inversion of reality tactics, cause here we are again. You violate the First Amendment and you get a free speech award. Yeah. Perfect. Alright, that's it. I am still writing out the next big video concept, but as I said, I'm gonna have a couple of these smaller videos coming out in the meantime, as we have some very important stories to get to. Anyway, until then, once again it's Helio Wave. If you like the content, like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video if you want to. If you're in a position to, consider subscribing on Locals or Subscribestar. As always, make sure you disobey those true fascistas, and yes, I do hope you have a good night.